Welcome to introduction to polynomial fitting to determine a closed formula for a sequence. Let's begin by considering the question, how many squares of all sizes are there on a chessboard? A chessboard consists of 64 squares as shown below, but we also want to consider squares of a longer side length. Even though we are only considering an eight by eight board, there is a lot to count. Instead, let's consider a sequence. The first term will be the number of squares on a one by one board, which is one, the second term will be the number of squares on a two by two board, which is five, and so on. Notice that we have a two by two board, there would be four one by one squares and one two by two square, giving us five squares. A three by three board will have 14 squares, a four by four board will have 30 squares, and so on. You may want to pause the video and verify a couple of these terms. This sequence is not arithmetic or geometric, but perhaps its sequence of differences is. For the differences, we get five minus one, which is four, 14 minus five, which is nine, 30 minus 14, which is 16, 55 minus 30, which is 25, and so on. Notice here, we have a sequence of squares. And therefore, the original sequence is just a sum of squares. Notice one squared is equal to one, one squared plus two squared is five, one squared plus two squared plus three squared is 14, and so on. Notice the sequence of first differences is also not arithmetic. However, the sequence of second differences, which is the sequence of the differences of the differences of the original sequence, is arithmetic. Notice nine minus four is five, 16 minus nine is seven, 25 minus 16 is nine, and so on. So notice here we have an arithmetic sequence where the common difference is two. So now if we consider the third differences, because the second differences is arithmetic, the sequence of third differences is a constant sequence with each term equal to two. So again, notice the third differences of the original sequence is a constant sequence. We call such a sequence delta three constant. And now if we consider the sequence one, four, nine, 16, and so on, again, a sequence of squares, this is a delta two constant sequence. And this is because the second differences is a constant sequence. Again, we have the original sequence, we have the first differences, which results in an arithmetic sequence, and then we have the second differences, which results in a constant sequence, which is why the original sequence is a delta two constant. In general, we say a sequence is a delta k constant sequence if the kth differences are constant. Every arithmetic sequence is delta one constant, and the closed formula can be written as a linear polynomial which we should recognize because we know when a sub zero is equal to a, the closed formula is a sub n equals a plus d times n, which is a linear polynomial. More specifically, for this sequence, two, five, eight, 11, 15, and so on, notice the first differences gives a constant sequence of threes, which indicates the common difference is three, and therefore the closed formula is a sub n equals two plus three n with a sub zero equal to two. And now let's consider sequences in which the formulas are quadratic, meaning degree two, or cubic, meaning degree three. Any degree two formula would fit the form of a sub n equals a n squared plus b n plus c. Any degree three formula will fit the form of a sub n equals a n cubed plus b n squared plus c n plus d. For our examples, we have n greater than or equal to zero. First, we have a sub n equals n squared. Notice the closed formula is a quadratic formula or degree two, and therefore we expect the sequence to be delta two constant. Our sequence is zero, one, four, nine, 16, 25, and so on. The first differences are one, three, five, seven, nine, 11, and so on. Notice this is an arithmetic sequence, and therefore the sequence of second differences is a constant sequence, which does verify the original sequence is delta two constant. Next, we have a sub n equals n cubed, which gives the sequence zero, one, eight, 27, 64, and so on. Because the formula is degree three, we expect the sequence to be delta three constant. If we take a look at the differences, we have the first differences. Notice in this case, the second differences results in a sequence that is arithmetic, and therefore the third differences does result in a constant sequence verifying the original sequence is delta three constant. But not all sequences are delta k constant. If we consider the sequence given by a sub n equals two to the power of n, 
which is the sequence 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, and so on, we can find as many differences as we wish. None result in a constant sequence, and therefore we say the sequence is not delta k constant for any k. So it is important to recognize that not all sequences are going to be delta k constant. The most important concept from this lesson is that the closed formula for a sequence will be a degree k polynomial if and only if the sequence is delta k constant. Or we can say the closed formula for a sequence will be a degree k polynomial if and only if the kth sequence of differences is constant. So once we know a sequence is delta k constant, we can use a process called polynomial fitting to determine the closed formula. To perform polynomial fitting, we first determine whether a sequence is delta k constant to see if the closed formula for the sequence is a degree k polynomial. If the sequence is delta k constant, we find the coefficients of a closed formula by setting up and solving a system of equations. And below we have the general forms of the closed formulas if a sequence is delta one, delta two, delta three, or delta four constant. And now let's go back to our chessboard problem and determine how many squares there are on an eight by eight chessboard. So again, the question was, how many squares of all sizes are there on a chessboard? And we found the number of squares on a one by one board, two by two board, three by three board, and so on, which gave us the original sequence. And the third difference is, resulted in a constant sequence and therefore the original sequence is delta three constant, which means the closed formula for the original sequence must fit the form of a sub n equals a n cubed plus b n squared plus c n plus d. So now we need to set up and solve a system of equations in order to determine a, b, c, and d. To begin though, notice a sub one is equal to one, but we wanna have an a sub zero, and therefore we let a sub zero equal zero. So knowing that a sub zero is equal to zero, we can form an equation where we set n equal to zero in the equation, which means a sub zero is equal to a times zero cubed plus b times zero squared plus c times zero plus d, which must equal zero, which indicates that d is equal to zero. Next, we know that a sub one is equal to one, which means a sub one must equal a times one cubed plus b times one squared plus c times one plus d, which we know is zero, which must equal one. This gives us the equation a plus b plus c equals one. Next, we know a sub two is equal to five, which means a sub two must equal a times two cubed plus b times two squared plus c times two plus zero must equal five. Simplifying, we get the equation eight a plus four b plus two c equals five. And finally, we know a sub three is equal to 14 which gives us a sub three equals a times three cubed plus b times three squared plus c times three plus zero equals 14. Simplifying, we get the equation 27a plus nine b plus three c equals 14. And now we need to solve this system of equations to determine the values of a, b, c, and d, though we already know d is equal to zero. And there are several ways to solve a system of equations. I'm gonna go ahead and use an augmented matrix and write the augmented matrix in reduced row echelon form. If you need review on that process, I will include a couple of videos in the playlist. But again, the first step is to write the augmented matrix for the system of equations, where in the first column we have the coefficients of A, in the second column we have the coefficients of B, the third column we have the coefficients of C, in the fourth column we have the coefficients of D, in the fifth column we have the constants on the right side of the equations. Next, we write the augmented matrix in reduced row echelon form, which gives us the values of A, B, C, and D shown here on the right. A is equal to one third, B is equal to one half, C is equal to one sixth, and D is equal to zero. So now we take the general form for A sub N and substitute the values of A, B, C, and D into the equation, which gives us A sub N equals one third N cubed plus one half N squared plus one sixth N, which could also be expressed in this form here which again is equal to the sum from k equals one to n of k squared, or the sum of squares. And now we can use the closed formula to determine how many squares of all sizes are there on a chessboard, where n is equal to eight, which we can see results in 204 squares. I hope you found this helpful.